All right, hello again. Today's task is to take this vanadium metal that we've made and turn it into vanadium tetrachloride by reacting it with chlorine. We have roughly eight grams of vanadium metal, about four grams of which we made last episode. Honestly, I, I copped a bit of criticism for last episode. Fair enough, I think, very justified. The fact that I used a glass reaction vessel which then shattered and sprayed the reaction mix and totally ruined what I was going for, even though there are other YouTube videos showing much better ways of doing it, some of which I've already seen, such as the gayest person on YouTube. I fucking live and die for the gayest person on YouTube. I've seen these videos on this topic and I didn't replicate it very well at all. Anyway, the point being, we have some metal, we have enough of it. Still can't find any terracotta pots. Everyone always suggests terracotta pots. I can't find any, so that's why I went the glass container, because I just don't have any terracotta pots lying around. Anyway, we're going to be using, well, pretty much, well, let's say most of this. I'll keep some of the big nuggets for sentimental value. So let's say six grams. I have six grams of this metal, and I'm going to crush it up. Let's go outside now. Let's grab some glassware and start assembling a setup. setup is done we have some dilute hydrochloric acid here or well, let's say about 15 percent generate the chlorine here some tcca trichlorocyanuric acid to generate our chlorine this is what i always use to generate the chlorine currently in there is a 1.5 molar excess which probably isn't that generous it's pretty modest but we can always add more if we need it later on so the chlorine comes over here this is filled with calcium chloride which will dry the chlorine strip any water off the chlorine will keep coming around around this corner into this flask where we have our powdered vanadium metal it's mostly powdered but uh you know, did my best. I don't think that blender is ever going to be the same again. Then we have the short path condenser because we don't really want to totally heat up the compound too much because it might decompose. It's probably overthinking it a little thing as we have so much excess chlorine, it probably won't decompose to any other compound but the most chlorinated one. But I also just really like using the short path condenser. We're using it kind of because I want to and I think it's cool. So I think we're all prepared. I'm not sure this has been on film before. This might be the first video this has made it into. This is my new Christmas present to myself. I still use the old manor for heating, but I got sick of not having the ability to stir on it. So it's not here for heating. We don't want to heat this, but let's just stir the chlorine generation, keep it moving. So what I'm going to do now is slowly generate some chlorine. I won't turn on the heating just yet. We'll see what it looks like. I should also set up a scrubber for the chlorine. That's a good idea. I set up a scrubber on the end of this for any excess chlorine just to be destroyed. So I don't poison myself. And yeah, as the reaction goes on, I'll eventually start heating it and then hopefully drive off the the VCL4. The boiling point of VCL4 is 150 degrees, which is a really nice number. I think it's 148, but that's a really nice number because it's low enough that we can use the hot plate. Uh, we don't have to go to the gas burner or anything like that, but it's not so high that we can still use the Teflon stir bars because it's not over the, the Teflon decomposition temperatures. And it's in a nice range for the short bath condenser, I think. All in all, it should be a fairly straightforward distillation. And I like saying that because it generally foreshadows when things go terribly wrong. So, you know, what could possibly go wrong? Nothing was happening at all and I, I turned the heat on and all of a sudden it, it, it started going very orange in there. So so I think something's happening, a bit unsure. It all looks a bit vanadium oxide-y, which isn't a great sign. Some liquid there. I think it's nearly there, but god damn, I got a leaky joint. It's just heaps of 
vanadium pentoxide, which you know isn't the healthiest of things. I feel like it's so close to distilling, it just doesn't quite want to. I'm not quite sure what's going on in the flask there, but um, yeah, it's just where's the temperature? The temperature's finally rising a little bit. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. I mean, it is working. It's just god awful. The joints on the on the short path condenser don't seem to be holding very well. I've got a little bit here. There's some liquid in the bottom of this flask. Man, it's not it's not coming easily. <laughs> All right, I got to shut this down. I think I haven't seen a drip come over in about half an hour, honestly. Despite me trying, I have no idea what's going on in the flask. Visibility is a solid zero. Right, even if we take this off. Actually, I can see in there now, sort of, not really. I totally cooked my stir bar, I think. It got too hot, I think I melted that. Uh, we can still use the Teflon stir bars, because... Here's all the liquid material I collected off the off the solid. Because there's there's some solid in the bottom of these flasks, which might be VCL3. Kind of see that they're kind of black crystals. VCL4, it's, it looks like it wets glass, so it's, it doesn't film very well because it turns the whole container orange. Cleaning this up is a challenge too, because this flask doesn't really look like it's got heaps in it. Still, it's still pretty hot. But if we just like slightly crack the joint, <laughs> yeah, it's really wanting to. Just keep putting weird stuff out. Here's all the vanadium pentoxide that made it through to the trap. Obviously it doesn't actually react with the water. I didn't think there'd be much <laughs> oxide coming over it. Here we are. There's a lot of oxide. So I didn't, the trap was meant to be there for the chlorine, but really the main thing was stopping the vanadium pentoxide. Now you might be seeing this kind of behavior and thinking, ah oh, yeah, but there's heaps of water in the air and it's all reacting. I want to stress that it's 0% humidity. Like it is hot and dry, it's very, very dry. The driest it can be, you can expect outside to be. So there is no moisture in the air. <laughs> so you can imagine if there was actually some humidity, this would be even worse. Because this is reacting with nothing. <laughs> Ready? Let's get this open. Now, this colour you can see at the bottom is from the VCL3, and that will dissolve in the water much more nicely. It's not going to form the vanadium pentoxide. So that's a lovely blue colour, so that's what we're seeing down the bottom there. Quite a bit of unreacted metal in the reaction flask. When I dumped it all together with all the other vanadium waste, you can see it's all bubbling quite vigorously now. Um, so all that powdered metal is reacting with the hydrochloric acid that's been generated in situ by tetrachloride reacting with the water. So, but that's fine. It's all waste. I mean, I was thinking maybe it would be nice to recover some metal, but I guess we won't. Seeing as it's all going to react away now. So I put some sodium bicarbonate in our vanadium waste solution, and it looks like this now. 
So we precipitated out some a lot of the vanadium ions. A lot of them are still in solution. That's how coloured it is. It's gone yellow, of course. Gross. Now, I often get a lot of questions about what I do with transition metal waste. We can't just throw this out because that's a lot of vanadium into the environment. What I do is I have what I call semi-permanent storage, right? I separate all the transition metal waste and just keep them as waste. And I, I feel like when I retire from this hobby, at some point, I can take them to a disposal place. It probably cost me a lot of money and it would be a once-off. There'll be a lot of questions asked, but I could probably do it. You know, it's a responsible thing to do. If I could take it to some sort of waste center and say, hey, look, I've got two liters of chromium, two liters of cobalt. I've also got like manganese, zinc, mercury is mercury sulfide, lead is lead sulfide, antinomy, platinum, silver. They're all in these containers here. So I try to put them down to their most non-toxic form. I could probably precipitate them all out of sulfides, but it allows me to reuse them if I need to. Don't put them into the environment. Don't, don't do that. I've got a little bit of vanadium waste from a couple of years ago. That's when I last did that vanadium chemistry. So that's that little green thing here. So this is a whole lot of solution, which is always a little bit annoying, but that can, that can be placed in there. So our yield here is 2.4 grams, which isn't very much at all, but it might put us into the double figures in terms of yield. Look, hey, hey, double figures is a success, isn't it? Thank you.